Welcome to 2022 Pollbook Training. This training will cover the basics of using pollbooks on Election Day. A pollbook is a device that combines pre-registration check-in and Election Day registration into one function. Pollbook judges work with iPads that are connected to printers. The pollbooks synchronize with and receive secure downloads from Hennepin County throughout Election Day. Pollbooks do not record votes. The software is intuitive and will not let you proceed without filling in all of the required information. Our poll books have been upgraded. The changes you will notice include new iPads with built-in secure cellular service, which means we no longer need a hotspot to connect to the elections office. The poll book now has a stand base instead of a battery base, and a longer charging cord has been included to plug the poll book into a power strip or outlet. Overall, the functionality of the poll book will be the same for election judges who are already familiar with the poll book. Setting up the poll book. Open the poll book carrying case and remove the printer, adapter, and power cords. Verify the numbers match on the printer, poll book, and case. Verify that the on-off switch located on the left side of the printer is in the off position before setting it up. Connect the power cord to the transformer box. Plug the connector into the back of the printer. Plug the printer into a wall outlet or power strip. Turn on the printer. Watch for the green power light on the front panel. Use the safety tape provided to bundle and tape down cords to prevent voters and election judges from tripping over them. Next, set up the poll book. Place the poll book face down on a flat surface with the ID holder to the right. Take the stand arm, squeeze the green buttons on the side of the stand arm, and place it in the circular opening on the back of the poll book. Release the buttons and turn the arm slightly until you hear a click. Slide the ID holder into place on the back of the poll book. Place the stand arm in the poll book base. Locate the green power cord and plug it into the poll book by the home button. Weave the cord from behind through the stand arm and plug it into the white charging block. Plug this into the outlet. Place the stylus in the ID tray. If it's not already on, turn on the poll book by pressing and holding the power button on the left side of the iPad. On the screen, check the accuracy of the polling location, verify that the 7 a.m. precinct records number is correct, Verify that the check-in count is zero. Verify that the lightning symbol indicating that the iPad is plugged in and charging appears. Check to make sure that the election name and date are correct. And verify that the printer and cloud icons are both green. Press the green printer icon and select test print. A sample receipt will print. Press get started. Now the poll book is ready for helping voters. Polling places are unique and may have limited options within the building to set up the poll books. In this example, there are two poll books set up on one table. Electrical cords are well managed under the table and there is suitable space provided for voters with disabilities. Two poll book judges can share containers for the signed voter signature certificates. One bin is smaller. This one is for pre-registered voters and one bin is longer. This one is for newly registered voters and includes the signature certificate with the voter registration application. Checking in registered voters. Before a voter can be checked in and receive a voter's receipt, you must confirm that they are registered to vote in your precinct under their current name and address. If their answer matches what you see on your poll book screen, the voter can then be checked in. If you are unable to find a voter's record on your first search, select Advanced Search and look for them by their date of birth or address. There may be a typo in their record or in your search field which caused their record not to be found on your first try. Once you have verified their address, select the voter's record to pull up the voter confirmation screen. Turn the poll book screen towards the voter and ask them to confirm that all of their information looks correct before continuing the check-in process by pressing Accept and then Submit. Once you press submit, the poll book printer will print a voter signature certificate and a voter's receipt. The voter signature certificate is a legal document. 
ask the voter to sign it in order to confirm the voter's oath and that their information looks correct. Place the signed signature certificate face down in the bin at your station and give the voter their voter's receipt, which they will then take with them to the ballot station to receive their ballot. Welcome, would you please spell your first and last name for me? It's Sammy Burke, um, S-A-M-M-Y, B-U-R-K-E. Let's look closer at the voter check-in steps. When looking for a voter's record on the search screen, type in the first three letters of a voter's first and last name before pressing search. This will narrow down your results enough to locate their record while limiting the risk of not being able to find their record due to a typo. Our search pulled up two voter registration records with similar names. At this point, ask the voter for their address so that you can be sure to select the correct record. And your address, please. It's 1111 12th Avenue Southeast. If the voter's name and address matches what you see on your screen, you can turn the pull book around and ask the voter to verify their information. Yep, it is. Then select Accept and Submit. Before handing them their voter's receipt, ask the voter to sign their signature certificate to affirm both the voter's oath and that their information is correct. Thank you, and if this is your voter's receipt, and you can take it to the ballot station right next door. Okay, thank you. Let's review a few key points. Search for voters only using the first three letters of their first and last name. If you are unable to find a voter's record, select Advanced Search to look for them by date of birth or address. The voter signs their voter signature certificate to affirm their information and the voter's oath. Store these signature certificate slips face down in their designated container. The roster correction form is used only to correct typographical errors in the state voter registration system. Poll book judges must select the type of correction from the four options on the form. Name misspelled, duplicate record, date of birth incorrect, or date of birth missing. A voter who has changed addresses, even apartment numbers, or changed their name must re-register. In the example shown, a voter named Lillian Joseph Ingram, spelled without an H, is listed as Ingram, spelled with an H. This error should be recorded on the roster correction form. After the form is returned to election headquarters, it will be used to update the state voter registration records. The report of deceased voter form is used when a voter informs the judge that a registered voter listed in the state voter registration system has died. Instruct the registered voter to complete the report of deceased voter form. Ask the voter to provide as much information as they know about the deceased voter. The information will be verified and the state voter registration records will be updated. If the voter's name is highlighted and the letters A, B are displayed next to the voter's name and address on the poll book screen, an absentee ballot has already been accepted and counted for this voter. They may not vote again on election day. If the challenged voter screen appears when a voter's name has been selected, the voter's registration has been challenged. Voters may be challenged for many reasons, such as having a postal return, currently serving a felony sentence, or having voted out of their correct precinct. The judge must complete additional steps before the challenged voter can continue the voting process. Be discreet and courteous when processing a challenged voter. If a voter's name is shown with the challenge notation, follow the challenge process detailed on the poll book screen. First, administer the following oath to the voter. Do you solemnly swear that you will fully and truly answer all questions put to you concerning your eligibility to vote in this election? Ask the questions displayed on the poll book screen. If the voters answer indicate they are eligible, press clear challenge on the screen. A voter signature certificate will print. Have the voter sign the certificate and allow them to vote. If the voter refuses to swear to the oath, do not allow the person to vote. Make sure the voter understands they cannot come back later in the day and take the oath. Press challenge refused. If the voter's answers to the questions do not satisfy the judge that the voter is eligible, press Challenge Failed. Before pressing Challenge Failed, 
or challenge refused, ask your head judge to review the situation and consult with your city clerk. This information must be included on the election day incident log. If a voter is in the wrong precinct and needs directions to find their correct polling place, you can use the precinct finder function in the poll book to print them directions. In the top left hand corner of the screen, select menu and then click on the precinct finder magnifying glass icon. On this screen, you will enter the voter's address and the poll book will then display the voter's polling place information with a map and directions. You can print the directions for the voter by pressing print location. After making two attempts to locate the voter in the poll book, verify the voter has the correct state approved documents before registering them. Refer to the resources provided by your city clerk for a list of documents that are allowed. Click on the register button to begin creating a new voter record. Election Day Registration Before registering a voter, you must first search for their record in at least two different ways. If you are unable to find a voter's record by searching with the first three letters of their first and last name, press the advanced search button to look for their record by their date of birth or their address. This ensures that you do not accidentally create a duplicate record for a pre-registered voter. If you are still unable to find the voter in the poll book, a register button will appear on the search screen. Before selecting register, be sure to ask the voter if they have proof of residence with them today. Use the informational handouts provided by your city to discuss the voter's options if they are unsure. Remember, there are several different ways for voters to provide proof of residence in Minnesota. Some methods include an ID and some do not. Some voters may involve a third person in the process to serve as their voucher, whereas other voters may provide you with a combination of a photo ID and a document to prove the residence. You aren't expected to memorize the processing steps for each kind of registration. Utilize the registration section of your election judge guide, as well as any other resources provided by your city whenever necessary. The voters election day registration and voter signature certificate forms print together as one long tape. Ask the voter to verify all the information is correct before having them sign the tape in two places. Place the signed, folded tape into the container provided for election day registrations. Let's take a look at a typical registration process. Welcome. Hi, I'd like to register to vote today. Well, let's see if you're in the database first. What is the first three letters of your last name? It's D-R-A. Okay, and the first three of your first? R-A-C. We'll just search. Nothing came up, so let's do it this way. Could I have your address, please? It's 1090 13th Avenue, and that's southeast. Well, you're definitely in this precinct, so let's register you. All right, do you have a current bill ID? Oh, uh, I, have a, I have a current driver's license, yeah. All right. Are you a U.S. citizen? I am. Uh, are you going to be 18 years old on Election Day? Yes, I will be. And let me scan it. Let's take a closer look at the poll book screen. Near the top of the screen, beneath where it says voter address, you can see that we are on step three of eight of the registration process. This screen is where many data entry errors occur. Take your time here to make sure everything is entered correctly. When entering the voter's address, less is more. Start by entering the voter's house or building number, then click into the street name field. In this field, only enter the first few characters of the street name. The poll book will then present you with a drop-down list of addresses to choose from. Select the correct address from the list, and the poll book will fill out the rest for you. Oh, don't forget to ask the voter if they have an apartment number too. Do you have a unit or is it a house? Oh no, I live in a house, yeah. On screen four, we select the voter's identification type. There are three options to choose from. Select the one based on what the voter is able to provide. Either they have a Minnesota State ID card or driver's license, they do not have a Minnesota State ID card or driver's license, but can provide you with the last four digits of their social security number, or they do not have a Minnesota State ID, Minnesota driver's license, or a social security number. 
Rachel provided us with her driver's license, so we will select the first option. Because we scanned her ID, that number auto-populated. On screen 5, we select the proof of residence that the voter has provided us with. Be mindful that what you select from the first drop-down menu will determine which proof of residence options you can view. For example, if I select photo ID plus document with current name and address, that is how I'm able to see the different kinds of ID, as well as the different approved document types to choose from. If I select Other on that first drop-down menu, instead I can select from options such as Vouch For or Valid Registration in the same precinct. Rachel's proof of residence is her ID with current name and address, so we will select that option, and then the Minnesota Driver's License option in the second menu. Again, because we scanned her ID, this number auto-populated for us. We've made it to screen 6. Collecting the voter's previous registration information helps election administrators maintain accurate voter registration records. This page does not need to be filled out completely, but capturing a voter's previous name and address here is helpful. Were you ever registered anywhere else? Oh, yeah, you know what? I actually was, and it would be under my previous name of Conlin. All right, so I'm gonna have you take a look at this, verify the information is all correct. Yeah, it's correct. I'm gonna give you your driver's license back. Thank you. Let's do this. The voter's registration information and the voter signature certificate print together as one long tape. The voter must sign this tape in two places, once to affirm the voter's oath and their information, and once more in the election day registration portion to affirm their eligibility. You have a very good day. To wrap up this section, here are a few key things to keep in mind. Since ID is not required to vote in Minnesota, do not ask a voter for their ID. If the voter needs to register to vote, instead ask them if they have proof of residence with them. If the voter is using a Minnesota state ID or driver's license as their proof of residence, you can scan it during registration by placing it in the ID tray with the barcode on the back of the ID facing the pollbook camera. This will save you some time during data entry. After you've finished registering a voter, make sure to return any proof of residence documents to them. To help reduce check-in and data entry errors, always turn the voter confirmation screen when it appears during the check-in and registration processes towards the voter so that they can verify accuracy of the information. Make sure that the voter signs their voter signature certificate slip in two places, including the election day registration portion at the bottom. Here is a closer look at how to scan in a voter's Minnesota driver's license, state ID, or learner's permit, should a voter provide you with one of these as their proof of residence. Place the ID into the ID scanning tray on the back of the pollbook so that the barcode on the back of the ID is facing the pollbook camera. On page 1 of the registration screen, press Scan DL Barcode in the top left-hand corner of the screen. If the pollbook is having trouble with scanning the ID, the camera is likely picking up too much glare from the card. Gently swivel the poll book to the left or right to try and remove the glare so that the poll book can scan the ID. Don't forget that on screen 5 where you select the voter's proof of residence type, the poll book will show you different options to choose from depending on what you have selected in the first drop-down menu. Lastly, remember that on the voter address screen, you almost always only need to enter data in two fields, the house number and the street name. By entering the house number and then typing in just the first character or two of the street name, the poll book will narrow down the possible addresses and present you with a drop-down menu to choose from. Selecting the voter's address from this drop-down menu instead of typing it in yourself not only saves you time, but it also ensures accuracy of the data. If your voter has a unit or apartment number, you will need to type that in yourself because the poll book cannot auto-populate that information. If a voter has changed their name or address but has an active voter registration record within the precinct, the update registration function can be used. 
The process for updating a voter's registration is nearly identical to the new registration process. When updating a registration, an easy proof of residence option the voter can use is valid registration in precinct. To update a voter's registration, select the voter's record, then select Update Registration at the bottom of the voter confirmation screen. You'll then proceed through the registration process. Election Day registration works the same for a person experiencing homelessness as it does for all voters. However, in this case, the voter may not live at a location that is in the pollbooks database. If this is the case, the voter can provide a description of where they typically sleep as their residence for voting purposes. The voter's proof of residence will most likely need to be a voucher. Contact your election office or examine any precinct map that has been provided to your polling place to verify that the voter is in the correct precinct. Then follow the same registration steps until you reach screen 4, the voter address screen. Enter 0000 in the house number field. Enter the description of where the voter typically sleeps in the street name field, then select Next. Use the drop-down to find the voter's ward, precinct, and school district information. Select Next. After you select your precinct from the drop-down menu, the public will ask you for a password. Your head judge or city elections office can provide you with this password. Enter password. You may need to correct a voter check-in if you checked in the wrong voter by mistake, or after checking the voter in, you discover that they need to update the registration. The first step is to locate the voter signature certificate and voter's receipt and write void on them. Place the voided documents into the voided signature certificate's envelope. Next, make a note about the cancellation in the incident log, including the time, the election judge and voter involved, and the reason for the cancellation. Search in the poll book for the voter record that needs to be voided. Select the gear button located to the left of the voter's name and enter the password provided to you by your head judge or elections office. Select Cancel Voter Check-in. On the next screen, print your name, select the reason for cancellation, and add any additional information for context. You can then sign the screen and press Submit. If you are canceling a voter check-in because you accidentally checked in the wrong voter and the voter who you meant to check in is still with you, you can now check them in under the correct record. Ensure the voter only ends up with one voter's receipt. The voter may have already given the first one they got to the ballot judge. Place the extra voter's receipt into the voided signature certificate's envelope. If you discover that you checked in a voter under the wrong voter record, but the voter has already left, Still follow these cancellation steps so that the correct voter can check in under their own record. If while registering a voter you accidentally make a small typo in the voter's name or date of birth, you can fix that by noting the mistake on the printed Election Day registration application. Using a pen, cross out the incorrect name or date of birth on the Election Day registration application, then clearly write the correction. Highlight the correction then print your initials next to it. Make a note about the correction in the incident log, including the time, the election judge and voter involved, and the reason for the correction. If the error made during registration was larger than a small typo in the voter's name or date of birth, such as an error in the voter's address or the entry of a voter's previous last name, you must re-register the voter on the poll book. We try to avoid this situation during the registration process by turning the poll book screen towards the voter and asking them to review their information on the voter confirmation screen at the end of the registration process. But if the data entry error isn't caught until the voter has already been registered, the first step is to again use a pen and write void on the top of the election day registration application slip and the voter's receipt. Then place both into the voided signature certificate's envelope and document the situation in the incident log. Re-register the voter and make sure that they only receive one voter's receipt. Following the 8 p.m. close of polls and after checking in the last voter, the poll books must be synchronized one last time. When the head judge gives the okay, the poll book judges perform this action. 
Once the pull books are synchronized, turn off the printer before taking it apart and storing it in the green pull book case. Remove the ID tray and stylus from the back of the pull book. Your city may have you turn the pull books off before packing them into their case. To do so, hold down the power button on the left side of the iPad at the same time as the home button until the screen turns black. By pinching the green buttons, remove the stand arm from the back of the pull book and lift it out of the base. Then gently fold it in the direction that makes it most compact. Following the steps in your guide, gently place each item into its designated space in the green pull book case, including the stylus, charging cord, and charging block. The pull book can be secured with Velcro straps into the roof of the green case. Once again, verify that the numbers on the pull book case, pull book, and printer match. Before election day, be sure to spend time reviewing any training materials you receive from your city and reach out to your city with any questions you may have. Don't feel like you need to know all the answers, especially if this is your first time serving as an election judge, but do try to have a good idea of where to find the answer to a question you have. Bring your training materials with you on election day to refer to as needed and know that you've always got the support of your fellow election judges and your city. This presentation was created by a team of cities in collaboration with Hennepin County staff. Special thanks to the cities of Edina and Bloomington for developing most of the media included in this presentation.